Good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. Um, coming to you this morning with uh, an update on a video I made a few weeks ago on a uh, guest wireless problem we've been having. Um, basically, if you'll recall, probably don't, <laughs> but if you do recall, the uh, problem was um, we would periodically just guest wireless would drop out. People would say, hey, no connection. Not, the SSID is there, the wire, wireless network is there, they couldn't get out to the internet. That's what I mean by no connection. So no internet access. Um, so we did some digging and, and digging and digging and digging. And uh, finally what we found um, by starting a Wireshark capture and I was, I was doing a constant ping to the gateway on the guest wireless network. Um, what I did is set up uh, a switch port here on my little test switch right there. Set up a switch port on the um, the guest VLAN, and uh, which is the back end of our guest wireless network. That goes through our wired network, goes straight to the firewall, and out to the internet. Um, in internally, it's just layer two. The only thing doing any kind of routing on that network is the firewall. So, you know, we were a little puzzled. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? And uh, so what we did is we, we started a Wireshark capture and just started watching. And here, here's what we should normally see. So let's see if I can do this here. All right, there's my laptop. That's got a, a hardwired connection into the guest network. And um, I'm using a little program over here called, uh, what's it called? Ping Plotter. And it's kind of cute. It does uh, trace route and ping at the same time and gives you a little um, graph of response times. And up in this window, it'll show you the, the routes. So if it's hopping through routers. Um, let's see, just real quick, let me show you. I'm gonna, uh, see. I like Ping Plotter, it's really cool. Let me get this thing going over here. Let's add a new one and let's just go out to Google. Sorry, switching around again. So now you can see on this thing, it's got every hop going out to Google. Um, that's all internet stuff, so I'm not too concerned about those IP addresses. Those are all out on the internet. Um, and it gives you the um, latency getting to every one of those hops that goes out to the internet. And then it'll give you, you know, the whole response time to the actual target there on the bottom. So anyway, back to uh, this other window. So right here, all I'm doing is pinging the gateway, which is the internal interface in my firewall. And I'm not worried about you seeing that IP address because it, <laughs> I mean, 192.168, everybody uses that. And I've used that because it's not routable on my internal network. So... Anyway, so I just keep an eye on that. And um, basically what I watch for is for this guy to stop responding. So basically you'll just see a big red bar uh, show up. Um, here, I can simulate that. I'm going to unplug this. And you should see that red showing up there saying that uh, there's no connection. It can't get to the gateway. Plug the network back in. And in a second, as soon as my laptop decides it's got a network again, there, you should see it start responding again. Way over there on the side, you can see it's turning green again and it's responding. Um, I need to restart my Wireshark capture here real quick. Let's go again. All right, so that's what I'm watching for is basically um, that red bar to show up. And when the, when the issue happens, it just, that red bar doesn't go away. It just stays there for, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes, an hour um, until I notice it. Now over here on the Wireshark side, that's, that's what you should normally see. You should see lots of, lots of happy, chatty traffic going on and, you know, all kinds of, 
tubes, all kinds of stuff happening out there. I'm gonna pull this bar down just a little bit. Um, so again, like I said, I just watch for this red bar. When that red bar shows up and starts happening, I'm gonna pull up a different wire shark window here. This is what we'll see. Quite a difference. I mean, I'm I'm scrolling up, 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 up. I'm scrolling down, 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 down. And that's what you'll see over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So I'm like, okay, somebody keeps arping for the firewall and the firewall keeps responding. And, and pretty soon that's all the firewall can do is it just, it's getting flooded with ARP requests. Um, an ARP flood, if you will. But there, it's always coming from one wireless client that's misbehaving. So what I was doing in that case is jumping on my uh, wireless controller and um, I'm turn the phone around so I can relax here. Jumping on my wireless controller in here and searching for that MAC address. Um, and then it would boom, it'd show me, okay, here's the client, here's its IP address, here's its MAC address. And um, it's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna disassociate that client and see what happens. And as soon as I would disassociate that client, network response would turn, it would go back to normal. All these crazy ARP messages, you know, it, it'd go back to seeing regular Wireshark traffic, you know, normally what you would see. And uh, the ping plotter would turn green again and start responding. So, okay, I think I we're getting somewhere here. So, um, first thing I did was open a case with the uh, Palo Alto. And they said basically, oh, yeah, sorry, there's really there's really no way we can help with, with an ARP flood. Uh, you're going to have to do that on the upstream switch. Okay, so I'd already opened up a case with Extreme, and they're the ones that kind of gave me the, the clue to, you know, hey, you use Wireshark and just see what's going on. Um, so I said, well, what can we do about an ARP flood? And he goes, well, here, here's a command that'll, you can limit broadcasts on switch ports and of uh, this switch that the firewall is plugged into and you know all of our internet traffic goes over those switch ports into the firewall um, all of our vpn traffic so i really didn't want to mess with those ports if i didn't have to um, so uh what i think i'm going to do instead um to try to cure this problem is I think I'm going to do uh, flood um, flood protection on the switch ports that the APs are connected to. And the other thing I think I could probably do is uh, check with uh, Extreme on the wireless side and see if there's any way we can limit ARP, ARP floods from the wireless controller um, because that's where they're coming from. They're coming from a wireless con client into the controller. Well, Actually, no, it's it's coming straight in from the AP and getting dumped right onto the switch. So yeah, once once an, a client authenticates with the controller, um, it's dumped in a VLAN and it's basically just treated, you know, it doesn't have to go through the controller again. It gets dumped straight onto this, this guest VLAN um, once they're authenticated and goes straight to the firewall. So yeah, I think that's where I have to try to do this flood protection is on the switch ports. Um, so yeah, that's that's the update on the guest wireless problem. Um, we'll see what we got to do. So I know there's some uh, some extreme gurus out there, some some guys that uh, I can tell you know more about this than I do. Um, so what do you think? Do flood protection on the ports, on the switch ports? Maybe try it in the wireless controller, or should I go down to the big? Uh, core switch that these are connected to and do it there. I'm thinking get as close to the edge as I can, as, get as close to the problem as I can and filter the ports. But let me know in the comments which, uh, what you guys would do. Even if you're Cisco guys, what would you do uh, on a Cisco switch? Um, now there's probably commands available on Cisco that we don't have on Extreme, but uh, what are you going to do? So, all right, I've been trying to keep these videos a little shorter after that big long one in the uh, emergency room a couple weeks ago. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I got for this week. 
Um, as always, if you like what you saw, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell. Um, give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down. And keep those prayer requests coming. And if you don't have any, pray for me. I could use it. Look at me. Fat old network admin. Just trying to do my best. <laughs> so, as always, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, God bless. We'll catch you guys next week.